President, um, let me start uh, by congratulating you on taking over the presidency of the Security Council for the month of October and to thank you and the Republic of South Africa for including this important item relating to peace and security in Africa with a focus on the centrality of preventive diplomacy and conf conflict prevention on the agenda of the Security Council. I would also like to thank the Secretary General and the briefers for their enlightening briefing and particularly on highlighting the role of women in preventive diplomacy and how we can leverage off the platforms and initiatives to promote better engagement. Mr. President, the contemporary threats to peace and security in our continent and indeed globally are so complex and interconnected with broad consequences that no single organization alone can manage to provide the appropriate solutions. Consequently, the scale and complexity of the challenges we face today require the harnessing of the collective efforts of all our stakeholders. In this context, the centrality of preventive diplomacy as a peacemaking tool becomes, an indispensab becomes indispensable in our peace efforts. Today's debate is therefore all the more relevant because preventive diplomacy and conflict prevention remain a strategic priority for all of us. They perfectly illustrate the raison d'etre of multilateralism and the different organizations that emanate from it. And at a time when the credibility of our organization is being questioned, this debate could serve as a basis to harness our collective commitment to devote greater attention to the prevention tool, which remains by far the most profitable in the long term, but unfortunately the least resourced. With this in mind, permit me to make the following three key points. First, given its clear comparative advantage in this area, the African Union has over the last decades adopted several instruments, mechanisms, and policy documents to boost its prevention capacities. As a result, Africa is well equipped within the African peace and security architecture and the African governance architecture as its twin blueprint for promoting peace, security, and stability. The APSA is built upon a continu continuum ranging from anticipation and prevention of conflict management and resolution of conflicts to post-conflict stabilization, reconstruction, and development. As you are aware, the AU Peace and Security Council is the nerve center of the African peace and security architecture. Since it became operational in 2004, the AU Peace and Security Council has covered significant ground and made considerable gains in addressing and resolving conflicts on the continent. Another pillar of the APSA is the Panel of the Wise, which is the core of the African Union preventive diplomacy. The Panel of the Wise, since its operationalization in 2007, has significantly contributed towards enhancing preventive diplomacy in Africa. Stemming from this panel, arrangements, there are a number of arrangements in supporting subsidiary platforms, including PanWISE, which is a platform of the African Union and regional economic communities and regional mechanisms, mechanisms panels involved in preventive diplomacy. Within the framework of enhancing preventive diplomacy, I would like to point out that the African Union Commission now has a functioning mediation support unit to institutionalize and provide predictable and sustainable support to all AU-led mediation efforts. Furthermore, the African Union's peacemaking and preventive diplomacy efforts are also championed by special envoys, special representatives, high representatives, as well as 13 liaison offices and missions across the continent. While some progress has been made in close collaboration with the sub-regional organizations and with the strong support of the United Nations, we must recognize that a number of the challenges continue to undermine our ability to effectively deliver on our mandate, most notably the possibility of gaining appropriate entry points into tense situations likely to evolve into violent conflicts. The second point I'd like to make, Mr. President, is on the importance of strategic partnerships. Indeed, the collaboration between the African Union and its regional economic communities and mechanisms and with the UN, as provided in the various frameworks, is addressing and resolving conflicts and has progressively gained momentum as guided by the previous 
by the provisions in the African Union peace and security architecture, architecture and the African governance architecture. The joint UN-AU framework for enhanced partnership in peace and security signed in April 2017 is premised on the growing recognition that stronger partnership between the African Union and the UN is a strategic necessity in the process of responding early, coherently, and decisively to prevent and manage conflicts in Africa. In addition, the progressively deepening partnership between the Security Council and the African Union Peace and Security Council through the annual consultative meetings is a, is a testament to the tremendous progress that has been made in fostering our collective efforts to address the complex peace and security challenges in Africa. Close consultations between the two councils and the implementation of the joint UN-AU framework for enhanced partnership in peace and security is improving our shared appreciation of the challenges of the challenges we are confronted with and is sharpening our response tools, including through preventive diplomacy. Mr. President, I would also like to highlight that the AU Agenda 2063 envisions a peaceful, prosperous, and in integrated Africa, which is consistent with the UN Agenda 2030 on Sustainable Development Goals. In line with the spirit of Agenda 2063, the AU is implementing its flagship project on silencing the guns on the continent. In this respect, I wish to commend the Council for its contribution to this effort by adopting Resolution 2457 earlier this year, in which, among, amongst others, it calls for the mobilization of the United Nations and its agencies to support the African Union in the impl implementation of its noble goal for silencing the guns in Africa by 2020. The results thus far obtained from this collaboration are quite appreciable, and you will agree with me, Mr. President, that only by pulling our collective expertise and resources together and leveraging our comparative advantages and working collaboratively can our two organizations re realistically expect to have a positive impact on the ground. My third and last uh, point is on the important role of including women and youth in peace processes, which cannot be overemphasized. It is only by ensuring that they are part of not only the decision-making roles in conflict resolution, but also in mediation, including in the implementation of peace agreements, can we truly address the issues vital to securing sustainable peace. The AU Commission, on its part, has created platforms for the empowerment of women in peace and security, such as FEMWISE, which is a network of women mediators. This network has attracted many young women mediators, a good number of whom have been trained and are being deployed to some conflict and post-conflict areas to accompany the political processes in several countries. In addition, our efforts to enhance women's participation and leadership um, through the African Union and the United Nations, we came together to help launch the African Women's Movement called the African Women Leaders Network, AULIN, in June 2017. The African Union has also recently launched the Initiative of Youth for Peace, which aims at empowering youth and engaging them in peace processes in the continent. In this regard, the chairperson of the African Union Commission has appointed a special envoy for youth, a young lady with the necessary experience and commitment, who addressed the Council recently. We're also undertaking regional consultations with African youth in order to further enlist their efforts towards building peace on the continent. Mr. President, in our endeavors, we're always conscious of the primary responsibility of our member states to prevent and resolve conflicts, as well as to protect civilians and promote human rights as provided for in the relevant African instruments and international law. This being so, I would like to highlight to this meeting, the launch of the Grand National Dialogue in Cameroon, dedicated to finding an internal national solution to the crisis affecting some, of, some parts of the country. We welcome this initiative because we are convinced that local initiatives driven by people stand a better chance of reaching a lasting solution in a spirit of compromise for the preservation of peace, stability, harmony, and national unity. In this vein, our collective peacemaking endeavors in Sudan, South Sudan, Libya, the Central African Republic, Somalia, 
Mali and the Sahel and the Great Lakes region in, and including the Lake Chad Basin and the Horn of Africa are commendable and should be consolidated through enhanced partnership between the African Union, the regional economic communities and the UN. In conclusion, indeed mediation as part of preventive diplomacy is indispensable in the resolution of crises and conflicts. Improving shared analysis and appreciation of the challenges we are confronted with is an important first step to providing coherent, effective and timely responses to conflict and crisis situations in Africa. In this context, we need to utilize all preventive diplomacy tools, amongst which are good offices, special representatives and envoys and emissaries to, frost, to foster a collective approach. Despite gains made, more needs to be done to further enhance the effectiveness of, pre of preventive diplomacy. I would like to therefore stress the importance of continued collective and concerted efforts to respond to the existing and emerging threats. The relevance of partnerships and the collaboration between governments, civil society organizations, and the private sector, as well as the sustained engagement of all stakeholders, including women and youth, in the decision-making processes relating to the promotion of peace and an advancement of socioeconomic development. Only by pooling our collective efforts and expertise and resources together, weighing our comparative advantages and working collaboratively, can we realistically expect to have a positive impact and durable solutions to ensure sustainable peace. I thank you.